Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. I'm starting off today in the base because we have some things that I did in between episodes. I automated the sieves again, so I will show you this over here. Uh, we have the uh, netherrack being crushed from two sides, from the auto hammerers, and then we have endstone crushed with two auto hammerers as well. And apparently this made 4000, even though I have it configured <sighs> to 2000 emit when levels are above or equal to limit why are you offline because you're not connected over there for some reason so let's get this south enabled okay it just isn't connected okay and the sieves are off currently because it's still processing the ores and i kind of uh configured this in a in a weird way i guess but uh basically uh, the sieves are turned off by the drawers. They have emit signal for total storage. So I assume when this empties, it's just gonna uh, start sieving again. Because I didn't really want to create a whole lot of backlog for these ores, because we don't really need that many, I don't think. Uh, we're gonna need the, uh, the magnesium for making uh, titanite, or just, I think, I think it's titanite. Uh, magnesium ore, I believe, is used in a, in a... This guy, Advanced Metallurgic Fabricator, uh, with uh, salt and carbon plates to make titanium ingot. Not titanite, titanium. So basically, uh, the ores, all five of them, go from here uh, to this side, and we process them with the Advanced Purifying Factory and oxygen, which we're producing downstairs, and I'm going to show you that as well. Uh, and then it gets crushed into dirty magnesium dust, and then sent over to the enriching factory, which makes the clear dust, uh, which then gets just smelted. So basically we triple the ore, which is the simple way with mechanism if you have oxygen. Or you can just pump in a whole butt ton of flint into this slot, and that also works. But I think uh, normally when I put in flint, it wasn't keeping really keeping up with the entire thing. But this is fine. It's working. We're uh, getting all the ores. And uh, you might be wondering, where does the gold and ardite and cobalt that you get from the sieves go? It goes into this trash can. We have gold, ardite, and cobalt in the sieve, in the seeds in the phytogenic insulator combat machine, so that is fine, and we don't really need to produce those and waste power processing it at least. Uh, so that is all good. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, this is all going to work, and once these drawers empty, and we're going to see uh, if they empty today and the sieves start working again. Uh, if not, I can just leave this be and... Uh, configure them some other way. The only problem I was running into is this is full of channels already. And I don't know if it's, uh, if everything is connected because here we have, uh, we can't really see. Why is it not showing us? But that's one, two, three, four, five. And then I believe there's an level emitter. So that's six channels. And then this is four channels. So that's 10. And then there's five here and another one in the back. So that's six again. Uh, and as you can see, zero out of eight channels. Yeah, we're out of channels on this side. Uh, so we might have to do things a tiny bit differently here because, you know what I might actually do? Instead of connecting this side uh, up there, we're just gonna disconnect it. Like all of these are gonna get disconnected. Like go away. There we go. Uh, and I'm just gonna connect this side because this probably has less channels. And we're gonna take this off over here. And is there anything up top here? This, yep. And that. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just run, I'll run cables uh, the way we need to. So we'll take this off and this off. And let me just switch to, to these cables just so I can see. Uh, you know what, let me do this off camera because it's going to take me a moment uh, and I'm going to reconfigure so that this side goes to the sieves and this side goes to the uh, inscribers and uh, or also the processing. Everything there is now connected and we have enough channels on both of the sides so everything works fine uh, and all of the level limiters are fine and we should be fine with also the crushed endstone as soon as we start sieving some. Uh, because this is all backlogged uh, with crushed endstone, and this is all backlogged with crushed endstone, and we're not really producing endstone fast enough uh, with uh, the um, with the phytogenic insulator, at least. Uh, so at least once this 
slowly empties the backlog, we fill up the end stone with the phytogenic insulator. And then since we're going to be sieving just like a little bit and wait until the ores are processed, I'm sure it's going to be fine. So yeah, that's all good. Over here, I set up a little uh, crafting operation for flint. We have just a sequential fabricator with three gravel uh, crafting flint, and it can, uh, it is just uh, extracted the gravel from the back from this material stonework factory, which I turn on when we need flint. So it's basically all on 700 and there, that much, uh, and that much of the flint for both of these machines. So they both turn on, we produce gravel, and then the flint gets uh, put into the drawer, which is lovely. Uh, and over here, I believe I set up, is it over here? I think so. Uh, nope, not this side. Then it should be here. Yes. Uh, I set up all of our, uh, or not all, at least some of the mechanism, uh, not mechanism, nuclear craft uh, thingies, ores. That's the ones I'm trying to say. So this is ferroboron, which is uh, steel and boron. And then the ferroboron and lithium combines into tough alloy. The graphite and diamonds go into hard carbon alloy and then hard carbon and tough alloy make extreme alloy. And there's also some more from nuclear craft that we're gonna need. So if we went, uh, here are the alloys. So we need magnesium diboride, which is magnesium and boron in an alloy furnace as well to make magnesium diboride, diboride alloys, which makes magnesium diboride solenoids and also makes the super cooler N is then used, you can use it for black iron, but it's an one ingot in the ultimate ingot recipe, so we need to automate it anyway. So I'm gonna do that, and then we have lithium manganese dioxide alloy, which is lithium and manganese dioxide. And manganese dioxide is uh, molten manganese dioxide, or manganese dioxide dust. But I believe we're gonna need, oh yeah, fluid infuser, which is oxygen and manganese dioxide dust. So we're gonna need to do some more automation for this and the crushed rhodochrosite. Uh, so that's not gonna happen. Ferroboron we did, shishibuchi, shibuchi is, shishibuchi just sounds better, uh, is the one for making signalum. Uh, tin silver, lead platinum extreme, thermoconducting alloy is boron arsenide and extreme alloy. Do we need this for anything? We need the this for some stuff. I don't know if we're gonna need this, but we'll see. Uh, zirc alloy is tin and zirconium. This is also to make the fission vessel. I think these are not really things that we're gonna need for any sort of recipes. Graphite and silicon, silicon carbide. Uh, this just has no uses, okay. And this also doesn't have a recipe and AHSL steel is carbon manganese blend, which is manganese dust and graphite dust. And manganese is, there's no really recipe for manganese ingots. Uh, it's manganese oxide ingots smelted and manganese oxide is the crushed rodosa grape. I don't know if this has any uses other than making the turbine controller, turbine walls and turbine frames. Like if we need it, we're gonna, we're gonna just make it when we need it. Uh, I don't think it's, it should be, uh, like a thing that we automate right away. So I'm just gonna automate the magnesium deboride and possibly uh, make the magnesium dioxide. That's a fluid infuser. We can still do that, I think. We can put it over here because we have liquid oxygen down below at least, or we have oxygen. We just need to make it liquid with the uh, rotary condensator, I believe. So yeah, let me automate a little bit of this and I will show you when it, once it's done. The lithium manganese dioxide alloy is now complete. Uh, we have a smelter taking crush rhodochrosite and smelting that into manganese oxide dust. And then that gets smelted into manganese oxide ingots, which then get put into a fluid infuser with liquid oxygen and manganese ingots to make the manganese dioxide ingot. And then that gets put with lithium in an alloy furnace and makes the lithium manganese dioxide alloy. And currently, uh, it is full on uh, on this. I have it set to 2000, but I kind of made uh, a bit too many of these, uh, of these manganese dioxide ingots, and I used all of my rhodochrosite. So it's currently just slowly backlogging. This is gonna fill up this drawer to 64, and then it's gonna stop and fill up this to 64. So we're kind of running out of this because the rock crusher that is making the crushed rhodosocrite is kind of slow, but it is working. I could give it uh, 16 upgrades, uh, I figured out. 
uh, and 16 energy upgrades. And then I work at 72,000 RF attack and make things a bit, bit faster. Uh, but uh, we can just leave this be uh, like that, for example. Uh, and it's just gonna fill up the the backlog in a couple of minutes. So I might just wait for that to finish or just leave it be uh, because I don't really need to worry about it. This is gonna produce more, more and more of it. I even increased the level emitter from 1,000 to 4,000 just so we have a bit of a higher backlog. And we're not gonna be using these ingots like right now and in this amount of quantity. So I think we should be fine. Uh, so yeah, uh, I did also some work at uh, Blood Magic, and I don't know if really at Astral Sorcery, uh, but um, let's go check that out. I'm going to clean up my inventory because I don't think we are going to set up anything else, but I can just at least show you here uh, what I did. I have this, uh, which is a villager spawner, uh, and then over here we have a blood altar the same way we had before with all of the things, and I made a few more slates. Uh, in between episodes, I have 158 and I also made more runes. So we're going to be able to upgrade to the tier 2 altar. And I'm currently just going to have this here. I really want to get to the next uh, altar for uh, uh, for this. So we're going to need uh, the runes of capacity, which are tier 3 imbued slates. Uh, so we're just going to need uh, how many of these? Just 4 imbued slates and then it's blank runes and stone burnt. So that's fine. The resonating gems we can can do. Draft of Angulus. We just need an alchemy table, so we just need to craft that one up. We can do that together here. So let's just get this alchemy table. Uh, and then I need my orb. Can I do this one? Yeah, there we go. So that's that. Uh, and we can just place you like right down here. I'll place it this way, I guess. Uh, and this is used to to make a few of the different things. So we're going to need to make antiseptic, which is gold, weed. I'm like going to grab all the stuff that I need for making this. Uh, so that should be fine. Uh, and then we need an elemental affinity reagent. This is going to require 300 will. Uh, so I'm going to set up a, probably just a little bit of a box with a random spawner for like zombies or something. Uh, and I'm going to also enchant my sentient sword, which I believe is in my system. Uh, this guy, I'm going to enchant it with uh, looting and probably mending. So we can use that to get more will. Uh, and I'm just going to fill up my will containers. I also made uh, or my tartaric gems. Uh, let's just do add blood magic because I have this and this in here. Uh, and I would just want to show you the way this works. We take some living rock. I'm just going to take like 16 or 8, let's say. And I'm going to put it in here. Uh, and I'm going to turn it on so it puts one living rock inside of the thing. Oh, it was on. There we go. Uh, and then it starts just crafting. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it just lagged a little bit. But I have this uh, basic redstone interface linked up to the spawner, and the spawner is set to pulse mode. So I just pulse it, and then I lag before I can kill anything. Hello? Oh, there we go. Uh, and I can just kill the villagers and fill up fill it up with blood and that just makes blank slates, which is really cool uh, So yeah, let me upgrade the altar to tier 2 get everything ready that we need for making this uh, This celestial altar and then I'm going to show you how you make celestial crystals as well It is time for the first upgrade I made a zombie spawner just next to the villager spawner and I kind of changed everything to dark glass just so it look, looks even uh, and we have a full Petty Tartaric Gem, so we can upgrade that to the next tier. I don't know how much will exactly it will use. 20. Can I make another one? Uh, no, I think I need the full one. So let's just get uh, this back on. Let's just turn this on. And I'm going to make the rest of these and then upgrade it to the next tier. I've made the tier 3 altar. You can use sea lanterns or glowstone. I didn't know you could use sea lanterns, so that's uh, much nicer than glowstone in my opinion. But there's five runes over here going from the stone brick pillar to the other one, and that's 20 total runes going all around the place. And I need to fill this in with some more dirt. Where is my dirt? Somewhere in here is the dirt. There it is. Aha, found you. Like that. And whoop, like this. Okay, now I need to make uh, some more runes. So I will take this, and we're gonna we're gonna just say extract uh, never active, and I'm gonna turn on my villager spawner. Uh, I'm gonna grab some living rock. <clears throat> I'm gonna put you in, and just let 
the altar do its thing once I'm stopping lagging. But I'll make some imbued slates. Uh, there we go. And I can just uh, kill some villagers while we need more blood. And that is slowly but surely going to make us the imbued slates. And then that should be good for the next year. Uh, we needed uh, those for the <clears throat> for the alchemy table because the next upgrade for the lesser tartaric gem is to get uh, the where, where were you the gem this one common tartaric gem uh, get needs an imbued slate so I just need to make those like that and we're gonna add them to the filter here and say extract imbued slates and we're gonna say extract always active so I'm gonna need to spend a little bit of time here. Uh, to just make those and I can even speed up the altar and every so often turn on the villager spawner and just kill them up. And here we have five imbued slates and we can make the next tier gem which is the common and then you can just take your old ones and yeah, I believe you right click them next to the one and then it just empties. So we get a quest now as well uh, in blood magic. We have the tier 3 altar complete. We can claim that we have the lesser tartaric gem and the common tartaric gem. Nice. I want to see how much this holds if this is the one. Yeah, I think this is this is going to be fine for what we need next. So I'm just going to craft the rest of these. I don't know if I really need this many, but I I think you only need two because you need to upgrade one and then the next one. But I'm just going to upgrade all of these because you know it's fine. Um, uh, so we should be fine on that. Uh, and this is still producing. I just need to give it a bit more uh, villagers. So it, it works better. I'm just going to push it like a couple times. So we can fill up the altar. And in the meantime, we can craft another one of these. There we go. I think when, it's, when it makes the imbued slate, it just drains blood. Super fast. Um, okay, so that is complete with uh, this one. And I think we should be fine on having just uh, the common one for what we need next because we just needed uh, this to make uh, to make the, the elemental affinity, I believe, was the reagent uh, affinity. This guy. We need this. So we need the air sigil, the water sigil, and the lava sigil. So I'll make all of those. We need just to put in blank slates, uh, another blank slate, and, an, uh, and a reinforced slate. So I'm just going to fill this up and craft the rest of the stuff that we need, and I'll be back once I'm ready. I have the reagents made. They're super simple. The water one is just a sugar and two water buckets. This one is a lava bucket, a coal block, a redstone, and a cobblestone. And this one is a gas gear and two feathers. And you just put those in the alchemy array, I believe. Do you not? Oh, I put the blank slate in the wrong one. Can I extract everything? I can. Nice. So the air requires the reinforced and this requires the blank. Okay, so it changes the array when you put in the slate. Interesting. I, it used to change the array when you put in the rune, uh, but we have the three sigils now. And the water sigil is basically like an infinite water bucket. And this is like an infinite lava bucket for for blood essence. And air sigil is the flight. Uh, so if we toss all of these three in, uh, and I just need to search for the, uh, we need another obsidian. Obsidian. We toss that in, that should craft us up. Uh, the Elemental Affinity Reagent. I don't think I should turn this into a sigil, no. But the Elemental Affinity Reagent basically t makes you the Elemental Affinity Sigil, which protects you from... Uh, it gives you like fire resistance and uh, other resistances. I don't recall really which, which all of them it does, but that is one of the components that we need to make this. So we need the Runes of Capacity next. Those are four... So we have the four imbued slates, but I'm just going to make a couple more uh, just so we can have a little bit of a backlog of those as well. Uh, we're going to automate the production of slates in the future anyway, but we need to get to tier four so we can get to the, uh, the well of suffering. So we can automate basically either witches or any sort of other mob dying constantly for us to give us LP. And we're going to have multiple altars and I'm going to even do some sort of building over here with the altars I think I might if we have enough space I might leave the altars above ground and build a building around it or maybe just put it underground 
Uh, but I think overground will look better, uh, in my opinion. So that is fine. Uh, so the four imbued slates, let's grab those and we need to craft them into capacity runes. So these guys, let me just toss those in. One, two, three, four. There we go. Runes of capacity. Uh, and what else? Resonating gems. I need to make the colored lenses. So that's in the celestial altar. That's no problem. Spectral lens. And let me show you the celestial crystals. And I need to make the draft of Andalus. So we need the weak blood shard. So we need the bound blade. Okay. So let's get uh, let's get that bound reagent. Uh, bound blade. It's gonna show me the bind. Oh, it's binding reagent. So that requires 400 will. We have that. I'm gonna grab the stuff that I need. Uh, so we need redstone, glowstone, a gold nugget, and I forgot what the last one was, a gunpowder. I think I should have still enough will. Yeah. So if we toss those uh, three in. Uh, and I believe the bound blade requires a diamond sword. So... Diamond sword. And we take this. This is going to be a bit of a bigger ritual, I believe. Uh, that Not use that up, please. Don't want to make that again. Binding reagent and that. And that strikes some lightning down and eventually makes you the bound blade. Uh, is this connected to the tier four? It's not. Okay. I'll just wait for this to happen. My sounds aren't muted, right? Oh, my weather's off. That's why we're not hearing the lightning strikes. But that's the bound blade. Uh, I think it should be bound to me. And now I can go over here. I should probably enchant this with like smite and looting and stuff, but we can uh, just kill some zombies here. Okay, this is really slow. Uh, let me go enchant this. I enchanted the bound blade and I got 52 weak blood shards <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice. Excusez-moi. Uh, so with the weak blood shards, we can get uh, the draft of Angelus. So let me collect all the things that I need to make that for the uh, for the recipe for the altar. Okay, the draft of Angelus is made. I got everything, just made it up, and I didn't really show it because it doesn't really matter. Uh, so uh, over here, I did a little bit of progress. Uh, the I upgraded this guy with holding, so it now can hold uh, one million five hundred thirty-six buckets. Uh, so we have that much of starlight, and I also have, uh, I believe, this guy, which has one hundred sixty uh, thousand millibuckets almost. We can fill it up if we wanted to, and then it's just gonna drain everything else. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, so with the starlight, uh, we can put uh, regular crystals. Crystal. Uh, if we look at, actually, no, I'm clicking all the wrong buttons. Ah, rock, crystal. If we take one of these, uh, let's just, size doesn't matter. Purity is the most important one, really. Uh, if we have a super pure one, I could say this 78 one. Uh, if we take this, and we toss it in here with some liquid uh, starlight. It's gonna slowly absorb that and get more durability. Uh, and let me take off my ring. Uh, but if I take a star metal or a stardust and toss that in together, uh, it's gonna turn into a celestial crystal. So we don't really, uh, I don't think it really matters. Uh, I have some celestials here. Uh, this one has 56 purity, we can use this one. But basically tossing these into starlight increases the size. And then when you grind it up, uh, the size goes down. So you have to be careful and check on the size so you don't break it basically. And But you can get a cut, the cutting to 100. The celestial cluster size can go to 900 and the purity can go up to 100 as well. But to get the purity, uh, here we go. That, we, that made a cluster. And then what I just do is take my time in a bottle and we just speed this up. And you can press F3 and on the right side you can see stage says zero uh, and eventually this will increase to stage four and then it's ready to break uh, but basically we'll just leave it be uh, for this recipe though we need this and then the uh, altar let's just check for what we need as well Res resonating gems mar some sort of marble so let's grab marble uh, not that one this one uh, resonating gems i do have some of those 
Uh, we need liquid starlight. One, two, three, four. Uh, and what else? Capacity runes. Oh yeah, we need the colored lenses. So we need the glass lenses. So glass lens, do I have any of those? I do not. Let's just grab some more glass panes. And we have uh, the ability to make those. We just need this. And I need my liquid starlight placer because this eventually drains it. I need the resonating one as well because I need to right click this for it to do anything. Uh, so I just need to make two of those. It should be fine. Uh, and how is my crystal cluster doing? Oh, it, upgrade, it upgraded a little bit. Just give you a bit more speediness. Okay, and another glass pane to make the other one. <clears throat> and how you make this collector crystal, it's just a recipe in the Celestial Altar. You attune the rock crystal, basically the same way I attuned myself to a thing in the Entunement Altar. You just put in the... Uh, uh, the thing, uh, you put in the rock crystal and then it basically attunes it to the uh, setup you have currently set up with the uh, with the relays or to the, I can't even say the word. Uh, can I make it nighttime? Thank you. Uh, basically to one of the, uh, one of the stars or the, oh God, I can't really find the name. What is, what is going on with me? Uh, one of the these things I, I can't really find the name it doesn't matter okay so we need the glass lenses we need the uh let's do glass lens oh it's let me be just some le just lens we need the regen lens so i need star metal aquamarine so star metal aquamarine uh and gaster And I'm gonna just put the, oh, I have the, do I have, that's the celestial altar. Uh, let's get that away. Altar, uh, give me this on, no, this iridescent altar. Uh, so it's the purple one is star metal and just illumination powder. Illumination powder, I don't have that. Hold on, ah, 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 why don't we know? Illumination powder, uh, that is niter, glowstone, okay. Have some niter, glowstone, not the glow, glowstone. Uh, and I think I have everything. Go, okay. Uh, oh, this is super fast. I thought I was gonna have to wait a bit, uh, but this one should be done. And I need to grab more resonating gems, two more. Oh, this is taking a moment. So let me craft everything and get it ready to craft the altar. This is everything for the altar. So we're just gonna sneak right click and it's gonna do a whole lot of particle effects and look really cool. In the meantime, is this on stage four yet? It is. We can just break this and we get some star metal starters back and we get our celestial crystal, uh, which has 84 purity. It's pretty cool, but that looks cool. Uh, okay, let me just break this. So we get the quest and I'm gonna place it back uh, possibly in the center. That might also help. <clears throat> like so. And with this our altar, we need uh, certain spectral relays. Some stuff goes out of the altar, as you can see. Uh, and we need uh, different like attunements uh, and stuff like that. So I need to rebuild the entire setup for this. Uh, there is probably one in here. Uh, Astral Sorcery, Iridescent Altar, done. Okay, so I need to rebuild this. I think you just add a few blocks on the top. Yeah, we just need some marble marble bricks, uh, I believe. And we just add those over the top here. So you need like that. Need to put on my, my magnetization ring. So it's three on each side. Okay, let me build this and I'll be back. After I built the structure, I had to replace the altar for me to get this uh, crystal showing up here. And the way this altar works, you put in the attuned crystal of the attunement that you want. For example, to make diamond seeds, we need this, which is over here in the constellations. It is the mineralis attunement. Uh, and uh, once we have it uh, in the sky somewhere, 
Uh, like right now, for example, we can uh, break all of these spectral relays uh, and get them back for the moment. Uh, and I'm gonna turn off F7 uh, and I'm gonna grab the spectral relays. We're gonna sneak right click over here and find Mineralis right here. Put it in my offhand and we can see where we need to place the crystals or the relays even, not the crystals. So like that, like that, and like this. There we go, that's the Mineralis. And we can uh, do a, I don't know if it requires a celestial crystal or what it does, but what, what if we get, uh, let me get this guy to a hundred size or 900 size and 100% cutting. So I infused, or attuned, sorry, uh, a, just a regular rock crystal with 8 purity. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, for this. But I attuned it with the right constellation that we need. And I remember the word for the constellation. But it's doing its thing, and it, I assume, should craft us the diamond seed. And I have the rest of the things needed for the emerald seed here. Uh, and then we can get uranium as well. So let's get uh, some supremium blocks out. Uh, and the ingots as well and then we need uranium I just set up the the uranium uh, processing or sieving so we are gonna take that down again I guess uh, and then platinum we don't have I don't think <clears throat> we have 25 platinums and we have 25 platinum ingots uh, we can probably triple this uh, or how much do we need uh, of the platinum? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. So eight times nine is, that would be eight less than 80. So 72 platinums. So that wouldn't, if we double this, it's get 50. Well, that's plenty actually. Uh, so let's, this is still doing its thing. I don't know if it just takes a while, but I'm gonna head over to desert base and I'm just gonna toss this. Uh, even though I could get it tripled, uh, you know what we can do? Um, come over here. We're gonna steal these. And I'm gonna take the boron clumps out and just triple this. Uh, Cause why not? Are you gonna... Okay, it's just going in here. And then as soon as it finishes, I have to toss in the boron. Uh, so let me triple this and see if I can get everything ready for the, the seeds that we need. So what I assume is that this isn't getting enough of the starlight from the celestial, from the attuned rock crystal. So I am currently upgrading its size. I don't think uh, we might just not use this because it has the purity of eight and we can use it for something else, but I can at least increase its size. And I'm gonna try and increase the sizes of all of these in between episodes and see if I can get a better purity, better cutting one here and see if that increases my uh, starlight production. If not, I don't really know what we need to do to increase this. I might do some research in between episodes and see if that, uh, if any of that will help me or even you guys can help me in the comments down below and uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong to craft these. But I did prepare eight platinum. We're one draconium block off. Uh, so for the draconium, we don't have any more ingots, but we have seven blocks. So um, I'm gonna need to go either kill the ender dragon again or just go find draconium. I believe in the end you can find it uh, by go vein mining the like outer end islands. I have the uranium uh, and then the tier five we need the, for the rock crystal. I'm gonna make a bunch of these celestial crystals. It doesn't matter what kind they are, so I'm just gonna make those. Uh, and the void metal, we need to progress in Thomcraft to get this. So we're not there yet. And the draconium, it's it. Rock crystal, that is it. Pl 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 platinum, uranium, and the emerald and the diamond. So I'll be back next episode. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also, consider subscribing to see the videos. Support me on Patreon if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.